Hey, it's Greg Milby, community storyteller for Kentucky's Heartland, and welcome to the very first episode of Cooking in the Heartland. Yeah. This is my friend Dana Fentress with the Hardin County Extension Office, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about doing this for a while. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited about it. Me too. Uh, especially when it involves food. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. I've got to, I've got to work on that a little bit. But well, healthy food though. So That's go. a good thing. Exactly. All right, so uh, we're going to be, we'll talk about the recipe here in just a second, but first of all, congratulations on the new space, Hardin County Extension Office. If you've not been over here yet, it is truly a gem in our community. Yeah. We, when we built this place, that's what we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be a place that the community could come that had so many different uses that um, there was a little bit of something for everybody because we built it for the community. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got the kitchen, we've got the sewing room, we've got the conference center, we've got board rooms, um, all for use. Now in the kitchen that we're in, this is kind of the uh, demonstration area, but I uh -huh. guess we've got four stations to where people can step in. Is this more of like a learn to cook type situation? Yeah, so we call this our teaching kitchen. Um, so for example, I've used, I've done several kids cooking classes in here already and used to at our old building, um, we would all cook around one stove and they would get to watch and they could do some of the prep work and all of that. But for the most part, one kid was doing something while all the others were watching. Um, so now we can break them up into four separate groups or five separate groups if we need to use this station too. Um, and they actually all get to have a hands-on piece. Um, which when you learn hands-on, you learn so much more. So that was kind of our goal with this. All right, so uh, what are we cooking today? We are cooking citrus chicken stir fry. Um, so we have, and I'll show you here, um, what we call the food and nutrition calendar. Um, we print it every year um, through the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service um, and our nutri nutrition education program. Um, and so what they do is they take popular recipes or just recipes for certain types of your whatever produce is available, whatever that is. Um, and they try to take some of the fat, calories, all of that out of it. Um, and they try to use, re one of the things that drives me most nuts about recipes is that you'll use a quarter of a teaspoon of something that costs $5, mm -hmm. um, different spices and stuff. And I like playing around with different spices, but realistically, um, they're not very budget friendly sometimes. Um, and so all of the recipes in here, they don't use crazy ingredients like that. They use things that you have at home um, and they, they really focused on like if it calls for peppers or onions or whatever, it uses the whole thing. And so you're not buying some sort of produce to use a quarter of it. And then what do you do with the rest? Mm -hmm. um, and so they, they put a lot of thought into these recipes. We print them every year. Um, they're free. They're available at our office. And then my favorite thing about them is instead of making you keep the entire calendar at the end of the year, um, they actually have recipe cards. Oh. So if you liked the recipes, um, you can pick the card that you wanted or pick all of them and rip it out and then you can recycle the rest of the calendar. So, Great idea. Yeah, it takes up a lot less space whenever you're not having to keep the whole calendar. All right, and you pick so. the calendar up here at the Hardin yes. County Extension Office, which is 111 Opportunity Way. You're exactly right. How about that? Nailed it. Okay. How about that? Get your homework for I'm you impressed. Here. Man, I'm telling you, Doug Shepard will be proud of me to know that <laughs> at this yes. point. All right, so what are we yep. making today? So January's recipe is citrus chicken stir fry. So um, stir fries you know, are, are common. They're easy to make, they're one dish. Um, this one's a little bit different because um, it adds in that citrus part. Um, but one of my favorite things too about really cooking in general, but this recipe too, um, if there's something you don't like, don't use it. If there's something you want in there, add it in. Um, but this one is a very simple, it's not a lot of ingredients. Usually stir fry has tons of vegetables. Um, and you've got to buy a little bit of a lot of things. Um, and so this one really highlights two vegetables. Um, and then we've got the chicken. You can serve it over rice if you want. Don't have to go from there. So it's good enough on its own without rice, but I love rice. So it's always going to be better with rice in my opinion. Okay, and, it's, and then the rice is, is filling. Yeah, exactly it's right. good carbs. It's exactly right. And we're going for brown rice, so a little bit of a healthier option. Mm -hmm. So, yep. All right, so let's get started here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you, hopefully, yeah, what well, my, we have. my screen is not showing it, so <laughs> that I'm seeing so a blank that's screen. That's above us. Yeah, that's above us. But uh, anyway, it's my, it may be not going to show itself properly, <laughs> but all right. That's so, okay. Anyway. Um, so we're going to take two tablespoons of olive oil. You know, uh, that worked like two minutes before we started. Isn't know. that crazy? I think it's because you plugged your stuff in. No, did it, it was working before then anyway. Control? No, so Greg broke it. I Don't did. come to the new extension office because Greg broke it all. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but no, actually your stuff is working. It's my stuff that's not working. So anyway, we'll get it to work. but uh, so a little olive oil in the, uh, yep. so you prefer to use olive oil as, as your oil of choice or does it depend on the recipe? 
Um, I almost always use olive oil. Um, of course, there's vegetable oil, canola. There's a million oils mm -hmm. now that you can use. Um, and actually, we have a new um, publication and handout on all the different oils that you can use in cooking, kind of the benefits to each. Um, but for the most part, olive oil is, is going to be your easiest go-to. Um, and it's, it's a good health option, too. So. Okay. Fun fact, I went to Greece um, between May, May, the end of May and early June, um, where the majority of olive oil comes from because they, they grow all of the olives. Um, and they use this, like, giant machine called an olive press um, that, that processes all of the, the olives and then literally just squeezes it out. Really? So, yeah. Okay. Does it matter if, because there's olive oil that you can buy that's more expensive yes. than the other. So um, quality well, does yes. matter? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's one thing in Greece they were very big on was all the little shops sold olive oil, obviously. And that was kind of their pride thing of like, but this is the most pure or this is from this kind of olive or this kind of olive. Of course, to us, we were like, sure. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'll Looks take great. One of those. <laughs> yeah. That's good. All right, so I'm olive oil in the pan, up. and what yeah. uh, what what type of t temperature are we putting in, like medium? Um, heat? We're just going to do a medium high. Yeah. Okay. So I've kind of got it. I, we have a gas stove here, um, right in between the the medium and the high. Um, if you're going to do it on an electric stove, go for like the seven to eight number. Um, that's what people always want to know. But what number do I put it on? So okay. There you go. Now your chicken here. Yes. Uh, that doesn't look like the chicken that I find at places. Though that's a little smaller. So what do you do? Do you cut so, this chicken or? No. Um, it's so funny because the majority of recipes when you see chicken, you see chicken breast or chicken tenderloins mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so we're going to use chicken thighs. Um, I think that they did that because price-wise compared to chicken, te chicken tenderloins is what people go for to be cheap because um, it's the, the least expensive option. Um, these are about the same price-wise, but you get a little bit more meat in each portion. Okay. Um, chicken breast are typically huge mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of times they're too much portion size for one people so or one person so I really like the chicken thigh option these are boneless skinless um, ready to go you can buy them bone in and they're much bigger mm -hmm. um, but these are the boneless skinless ones okay so I learned something right there I'm yeah. always getting the chicken breast and yeah and I mean I don't know where those chickens come from but those things are massive, absolutely massive right? now and so portion size if that's something that you're trying to watch and that's another thing that this calendar focuses on is um, we want you to, to have good health um, Portion size, your thighs are a lot better. Plus the chicken breast, cooking wise, if you think about chicken breast, there's one side of them that's just absolutely massive. And then the mm -hmm. kind of the tail of it is really thin. And so getting that to cook consistently is always a trick. Right. If you either get the one end just right, you cut in the other end's raw, or you get that in right, this side is dry as can be. And so these you can cook a little bit more consistently because they're all the same okay. width and all of that. I noticed so. you didn't season them. You don't always have to throw salt and pepper you and stuff on them? You don't always have to throw salt and pepper. Okay. Um, you can if you want, but we're going to use garlic powder um, here in just a second. And then we have pepper in our um, sauce that we're going to use. Okay. So if you're a salt person and you want to throw some salt on there, you can. Um, but again, just health-wise, we try to watch some of those things with the calendar and, and whatnot. So. I always think about people when they do that, they immediately throw salt on everything yes. before they even taste yes. it. Uh -huh. I'm like, you're, you're missing out. You may be missing some of the great flavor right. in there if you do that. Right. And a lot of people drown some of the the flavor mm -hmm. with all the salt that they use. But one thing, I try to not cook with salt a lot just because you have so many people, um, and and it's probably less likely in families and whatnot, but you have so many people who that's exactly what they do. They salt it before they ever even take a bite. Um, and I'm married to one of them, and sometimes he'll eat it, and then he'll say, oh, but a little too much salt. That's because I already salted it. <laughs> you know, like, so we're just going to let those cook. We're going to flip them every once in a while. I flipped them once, so we're going to go ahead and add... Um, our garlic powder, which is two teaspoons. And I'm just gonna kinda evenly spread this among um, among our chicken here. Enough goes into the pan that when we flip it again, it'll get on all of the sides. Um, so that's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna let this sit for a minute. Um, and while we let it sit, we're gonna make our sauce or juice or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and this is where this differs from your traditional stir fry. So we're actually going to use orange juice. Um, it's a fourth a cup, whatever kind you want. Pulp, no pulp, totally up to you. And then we're going to add in um, black pepper. So we've got a half a teaspoon there. We have got two tablespoons of soy sauce, low sodium kind. Um, is going to be the better option, but obviously any kind will work. 
And then we're actually going to add in some honey. Um, so if I remember right, we're going to use one teaspoon of honey. Um, fun fact, if you're ever measuring honey or um, peanut butter or anything like that, if you want to put a little bit of olive oil or some other type of oil in your spoon first and dump it out, it makes it smoother for the sticky stuff to come out easier. That's a trick. Yeah. So, because otherwise you sit and wait for this to happen. Yeah, and I'm particular when I'm measuring like that because when you flip it over, you if lose. you don't scoop it all out, uh -huh. then when you, if you need another teaspoon, then you're not really yep. truly getting another teaspoon. Yep. Um, so that olive oil trick will work. That uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to come out. So we're just going to mix that up. And then I'm going to flip the chicken one more time and I'm going to finish cutting up my pepper here. Um, pepper, bell pepper, not spicy. A lot of people make that comment that they don't want peppers because they can't have spicy stuff. Bell mm -hmm. peppers are not spicy. Um, they're just a really good way to add in some crunch and some flavor. Um, everybody goes for green peppers, always. Um, but green peppers are actually the least flavorful of the peppers. Okay, I was just um, going to ask you why you choose red over the yeah. green. So, well, so you're you getting just kind different. of sold me out just then. Yeah. I do the exact same thing. You are getting different health benefits um, because color is where vegetables have their health. You can tell kind of how good things are for you by their color. Um, and so not that we don't love green vegetables because we do, um, but in terms of peppers, you're getting a lot more from a red pepper or an orange pepper, yellow pepper even. Um, and then they cook differently. So it's kind of like some apples are really good for baking and some are not, they just turn to mush. Um, peppers are kind of the same way. And so the red and the orange are a little bit sturdier, so they cook a little, a little bit better. Um, plus we are gonna use green in this dish with our peas. So you didn't want to, we didn't want to do green peppers also. Um, in terms of red or, or um, orange or yellow, it says red or orange in the calendar, but the other day I made it and whenever I went to the store, all of the red peppers looked pretty sad. Mm -hmm. um, and so I ended up going with a bunch of yellow peppers and it was fun. Um, but one thing about peppers to note too is a lot of times when we pick them out at the grocery store, we think that they have to look just exactly perfect. Um, and any, really any produce, it doesn't have to at all. Um, it's okay if it's got some scratches and dents. You don't want big bruises and big soft spots and that kind of stuff. But if there's, you know, a little mark on the skin, that doesn't mean that it's bad produce. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of times when you go to the grocery store, you can see people who just go over and over through all the peppers trying to find one that looks perfect. Mm -hmm. And very few of them look perfect. We're just gonna dump all this in. The um, honey obviously doesn't stir in totally, so we're gonna scrape that out with all the pepper. Okay. So for people that maybe aren't familiar with your job here at the extension office, mm -hmm. you, uh, I mean, you're, you're more of a, I don't know, adulting skills is what I like to say. You're more of a life skills yes. type person. So yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis, to kind of explain what your job is here. <laughs> I, well, I tricky. know Clip Notes version, because I mean, we're, this is a whole series. We're going to do a right. bunch of these, right. but uh, I mean, you do quite a bit of stuff, but yes. so, it's obvious that you have taught how to cook something before. It's um, the, the most basic way to do it is to think about home ec, right? So home ec in schools taught you those things that you need to run a home, run a business, whatever it is. And running a home versus running a business really isn't that different. You still have to make sure that the bills are paid and, and that your um, expenses don't go over your income, all of that. You still have to make sure that your people are fed, whatever it is. Um, but we go beyond that in extension. So community education is what I say. Um, and you're exactly right, life skills. So what does it take to help somebody be self-sufficient, um, financially stable, um, healthy? Um, and you know, I try to be as realistic as possible when it comes to my teaching um, because it's nice to say that everybody's going to run three hours, right? Mm -hmm. And that they're going to do all this exercise and they're going to use all these cool ingredients that are, that are new and healthy and all of this. But realistically, you have to teach somebody how to be self-sufficient with what they have. Um, and so it's making those little changes. How can we cut out a little bit of calorie, a little bit of salt, that kind of stuff? Um, how can we add in a little bit of exercise, that kind of stuff, that are realistic so that it's actually going to be sustainable? Because um, you, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. That's the thing. And that's what... I keep yeah. telling people that uh, you have to you have to start somewhere right. because if, if if you don't then well you're you're never going to get 
from point A to point right. B. Or you're going to get there and you're going to get there really fast and then you're going to totally burn out on it. And it's going to be like, I can't, I can't sustain this. Um, and so we try to teach people, here are things that you can do that actually will last long term because they don't feel like such a sacrifice. Um, because if you tell me, here's how to be healthy and you say, okay, now you can never have ice cream again, I'm going to laugh in your face. Yeah. I'm going to be like, well, never, I'm not going to be healthy because I can't do that. Um, but if you say, have the ice cream, but then here, let's add in some veggies here and let's take out some calories here. Okay, I can do those kind of things. So. All right, so we've rigged this up a little bit more here. So I want to oh, be able to show you. Fancy. We fixed that. Yeah. Doesn't it look good? It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of color. And I think, you know, food tastes great, but if it doesn't yes. look good, it it's not, to me, it may not taste good. But, uh, I mean, that has a lot of great color. Now, when you cook these peas, are you one of those that, uh, that has to cook it down to uh, the, a really soft level? No, so I like crunch. Okay. in my food. Um, and so in this dish, the, the peppers are actually going to cook a little bit faster than the peas do. Um, and so I like the fact that the peas stay a little bit crunchy. If you wanted them to be a little bit more mushy, just add them in sooner and that would be fine. Um, but no, I, I will say this. I did this dish with um, the kids cooking group that I've, that I've done because um, one thing that we're trying to get them to do is um, read the recipes and make it themselves because if you can read a recipe and figure out how to follow it you can you can feed yourself mm -hmm. um, but truthfully that's where a lot of people struggle um, and so maybe it's just that you start with step one and you think that you do it step by step and you get to step four and you realize oh crap I needed to have done this before I even started step one kind of thing um, and so it's teaching those kids read through the whole recipe read through all of your ingredients and make sure you have it with you and then you're not running around and then you're burning something because you're running around mm -hmm. trying to do something. Um, so what we do is with we ha the stations now, they have to actually cook their meal. And if they mess it up, then, then they've messed up their meal. And we talk about um, why the mess up and how we avoid it and all of that stuff. But one girl, um, when she read the peas, it's eight ounces of sugar snap peas. So she got out the measuring cup and she found eight ounces, which is what she needed to do. Um, but she started breaking the peas apart. So she thought we were just using the pea part mm -hmm. um, inside. And so I was like, no, we're actually going to use the whole thing. And she said, what do you mean the whole thing? She said, I can eat all of this. Yeah. Um, That's so a country girl right teaching, there. <laughs> yeah. It's just teaching those skills of yeah. what can you use um, in our food. And, and, you know, when you get produce and all of that, what can you use? So I'm using a different skillet, I'll show you. Um, it has kind of the lines. Yeah. And so it cooks a little bit different. Um, it kind of puts... I like the way that it cooks. Um, it kind of gives it more of that grilled look than anything else. But so the big debate for a lot of people is chicken, uh -huh. because you you don't want to undercook chicken. Uh -huh. I know that because that's not healthy. But you also don't want to overcook chicken because mm -hmm. when you get the dry chicken, I'm I'm a chicken guy. Uh, people around here that have had my chicken, they're like, okay, what do you do? I mean, they ask for my teriyaki chicken, and it breaks their heart whenever. I tell them it's just uh, it's just a out of a out of a bottle teriyaki marinade. <laughs> yeah. But it's really and truly on on you've got to know the feel on when it's done. Yeah. Um, any tr any tricks to knowing that? So, for me, food safety wise is is obviously what I I teach, and so a meat thermometer is always going to be the the way to go for me. Um, so chicken, we're trying to hit 165 degrees, um, and then. For me too, and, and you hit the nail on the head, using a marinade. Using something that will add in those juices to start with. Um, and that way, as it cooks and some of that evaporates, you're not taking everything from the original chicken breast. You're taking some of that that we've added in and we've given it kind of a, a little bit of a leeway there. Um, so I'm big on marinades. Um, this dish, the orange juice kind of acted as that. It gave us that extra liquid in here. Um, so what's the orange juice do? What kind of flavors is that? Is that is that you, know, you mentioned it is keeping the meat a little right. moist, but is it is, is it also bringing out flavors yeah. from some of the other vegetables? Yeah. Um, so it just gives it that citrus. It kind of almost enhances all the flavors of the vegetables at the same time as like kind of calming them, calming, bringing them together. I don't know what word you want to mm -hmm. use, um, but you will you will taste the orange juice um, in it when you taste it. So. Um, let me flip this. I've got my baby tongs here. Now that the chicken's not raw, I switched my tongs. 
Um, so you use two types of tongs when you're doing chicken, is that, or is that just you? It's just you, me. Okay. Um, cross contamination. You know, we don't want that. No. Um, just like we would use a different um, cutting board for raw chicken that we than we would raw vegetables. All of that. Um, the number of times that I hear people say, "But we're going to cook it all, so what's it matter?" Still, ma you know, you still yeah. don't want to. If mm -hmm. if something in the in the chicken was, you know, there was bacteria or whatever, do you want to add it to your vegetables and have double the chance? No. No. Um, so we do use different um, cutting boards, different utensils sometimes just for that reason. So here's the reason why I use this pan. See how it kind of gives that grilled. Hold on, let me, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the, the Greg yeah, cam back out here. Right. It kind of gives that grilled yeah. mark to it. Mm -hmm. It's not something you have to have, but we are visual people. We like for our food to look Oh good. yeah. So just, and as silly as that is, grill marks look better. This so. is not a, a an overly difficult recipe either. It's no, as far as time it would take. When you get home, and that's, that's been the issue with, I think, with people now is we're all so busy that when we come home, it is easier to go through a drive through yes. or easier to grab something out yep. of a box or... Um, yep. So I think the, the key is to be able to have recipes like this on hand that you right. can you can turn pretty quick. Right. Um, it's, you know, think about the electric pressure cooker. That's why they're huge right now because mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of time and, and you don't want to stand over something um, for a long period of time. So this dish, you know, we're done. Um, and this was while we sat and slowly talked and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I like is make it as easy for you as you can. So this chicken, um, when you buy chicken thighs, there was one small pack of chicken thighs at the grocery store, but they cost as much as the large pack. Um, so buy the large pack and then break that up. And for, if there's four people in your family, freeze four at a time. If there's two people, freeze two. And that way you can pop those out um, thaw out only the amount that you need. Um, you know, if you need to get home from the grocery store and pre-cut everything to use through the week, go for it. Um, if you absolutely don't have time to pre-cut, I totally understand, don't mm -hmm. do that. I think we've, we, meal prepping is huge right now. Um, and I think there's a lot of pressure to go home on Sunday and just cook all day for yes. the week, right? Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, how many people, Sunday is your only day with your family that you want to just sit down on the couch and relax and you don't want to go cook all day long. And so don't do it. And that's totally fine. Um, just do it right before this dish. So right before you make something, right before we did this, um, I like this dish because literally the only thing I had to cut up was the pepper, one pepper. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an easy thing to do. And so I try to find recipes that you can kind of make and, and cook as you go um, and don't require a lot of prep work because of that reason. Um, but they are out there. So I think a lot of people in their mind, they think cooking just takes so much time. And it doesn't. Now you brought up the point of uh, of these uh, electric cookers, mm -hmm. and I know we, we were talking about. We were kind of debating on what we were going to actually cook today, and one of your options right. was those. It, do you think that's a fad, or is that something now that the technology is here that it will continue on? So here's what I find um, kind of funny about the electric pressure cooker: is people think that they are just the coolest new thing ever, and and how did we live without them before? Well, we didn't. We had pressure cookers, and pressure cookers have been around for how long? How many people's grandmas used mm -hmm. pressure cookers, right? Um, it's just that they took the pressure cooker and instead of having to watch the gauge or listen to the jiggler, we press a button and it has a timer. It's the exact same thing though. Um, it's just that we updated it with technology. So do I think that it'll be around for a long time? Yeah. Yeah, you do say I think electric it's a fad? pressure cooker, but so you don't use the name Instapot. Correct. Because that's the it's name kind brand, of right? Like, okay. right? Like um, Xerox is for copying yes. things? Okay. It's just like um, Crock-Pot is actually a slow cooker. Um, you know, we call all tissues Kleenex. That's a brand. Um, so there are a lot more brands than just the Instant Pot, but that is how people know them. Um, and for somebody no, that's on the go, it, so. and for somebody that's on a go, one of those electric pressure cookers, is that something that they probably should invest in and, and really get to know some recipes? Yes. Okay. So if you, um, I was a little bit hesitant about it at first just because um, I didn't know if it was gonna be worth the investment. But if you're somebody that your family likes meat, um, or if you like soups, and if you're not one of those people, I love the slow cooker um, mm -hmm. because I like walking in my door and dinner's ready, and you smell it. Like, I love that idea. Some people are terrified of the idea of leaving their slow cooker at home alone all day. Mm -hmm. um, and so the electric pressure cooker is for those people um, that you want to make a meal, but you don't have time to set it all out in the morning or, or morning is or just not your, your thing, which I totally get. Um, and so you walk in, you stick it in there, it's done in 30 minutes. Um, 
ever since we have had our electric pressure cooker, we eat pork tenderloin 10 times more than we used to, just because I can walk in, I sear it, there's a saute button, you sear it to trap those juices in so mm -hmm. it's not dry. Um, and then we add in our liquid, we pop the top on, it's done in like 11 minutes, it's yeah. no time. Um, so there are still the same safety features that you've got to watch with the old pressure cooker, um, but they've made things so much safer now than they used to be. Um, and then it's just, it's using your head, you know, and making sure that your parts are all, all there and all working and they're not as scary as people make them out to be. And there's social media, you can go online now and I mean, there are 8 million recipes that yes. you can find with these yeah. things. The one thing to note though, um, that I think is important with anything that you do, um, anybody can put anything on the internet, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so dot com websites are um, not all not to be trusted, but just where you need to use a little bit of extra caution when you when you look at things. Um, recipes in an instant pot um, or electric pressure cooker especially because those require a certain amount of liquid mm -hmm. to be safe. And so if you're trying to avoid blowing up in your face and all those, those horror stories that we hear, um, you've got to make sure that you're using that correctly. So make sure that you get um, your electric pressure cooker's manual and that you are following how much liquid it needs, all of that stuff. And that if you have a recipe and there's not liquid in it or not enough liquid in it, um, then don't use that recipe or adapt that recipe to have enough liquid for yours. Okay. Um, so make sure if you're getting it off the internet that you're doing a little bit of research first. Otherwise, you can do um, anything off of an edu, um, a .org or a .gov. Those aren't um, open for everybody's sites. And so they're typically gonna be research-based and, and a little more credible, right. a little more safe. Good stuff. So. Boy, this is looking good. Let's, uh, let's get another, uh, another cam look there. Yeah. Man. All the color. And so this, if you like corn, um, or you like broccoli, or for, my, for me, um, with a stir fry, I love water chestnuts in a stir fry. It just adds mm -hmm. that good crunch. Um, there's no extra fun color with a water chestnut, but you can add in whatever you want. Um, if you wanted more color, if you wanted, if you needed to bulk it up a little bit more to serve more people, vegetables are a good way to do that. And then again, with the rice. Um, so this is gonna feed very comfortably for people, but even these pieces of chicken, some of your um, family members could split. You don't, so. you've not seen my family eat, have you? <laughs> we have two sons. <laughs> I have two growing boys. <laughs> that might feed so. them. <laughs> Except for the right. vegetable part. I so don't know, that's this like is a, that's like a in cuss word. That, um, the bulk package was cheaper for you. Mm -hmm. So if you need to do more, do more. <laughs> All right, no so I, I think this is great. It's it's a healthy meal for people. And you, you'd mentioned it earlier, just talking about the challenge of day to day. And there's so much information out there yeah. and, and not always great information because there's different diets you can do and all that. But eating in moderation is good. And, yes. But sometimes, even though me, who have ran for a few years now and was lifting weights for a while, quite a while, and then was eating healthy, now that I'm trying to get back into it, I, I'm not confident with my knowledge on what I'm doing because there's so many options out there. Yes. So I know there's an app, the uh, Get yeah, Fit Blue app that, uh, that that is uh, there's a there's a flyer over here that mm -hmm. we can't necessarily see the entire well, here, thing, but you can tracking. look at that. Look at that. I'll, you you want turn me go it this that way. You yeah, you turn you can turn it that way. There, there you go. go. So it's the Get Fit Blue app. So free app that they can download. Yeah. So Fit Blue is an app that um, the university created. And um, it was kind of their intent of a way to reach people because we're always on our phones, right? Mm -hmm. Phones, watches, whatever it is, um, that we're going away a little bit from, let me read this big publication. Um, and so what Fit Blue has that I think is so neat, it does have a ton of recipes, which is awesome. Um, so if you're in the grocery store, you can search a recipe really fast. It's got all, all the lists that you need, the grocery list. Um, but one of the things that I really like about the Fit Blue app is that it has videos of exercises that you can do. Um, and they even have exercises for those with limited ability. And so if you yeah. wanted to do chair exercises, there's some of those on there. Um, and you're actually watching someone do this exercise. Um, and so you don't have to go to a gym, you don't have to have all these crazy equipment, mm -hmm. anything like that. And it's things that you can do right in your home. And the other thing that I really like about that, this app is that say you're traveling um, and you're gonna, you're gonna take a dish. Um, instead of having to run to the grocery store, you can actually look up the closest farmer's market. Um, and so one of the things it's trying to promote, obviously, is Kentucky produce, um, Kentucky farms. Um, and so you can click on that. It finds your location, tells you where the closest one is and how to get there. Okay. So, so again, it is the Get Fit Blue app. It's available on Android and iPhone devices. Mm -hmm. uh, download that. It's a great resource for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, that's pretty cool. All right. So let's, let's move this thing back out of the way here. Okay. And uh, now the we get to... show. 
now we're gonna oh okay yeah let's hear here we'll do this we'll uh the oven is off by the way yeah. the stove is off yeah because that wouldn't be good <laughs> for a video would it no. so the uh, food and nutrition calendar yeah. for 2020 and this is the january recipe yeah yeah so oh, i like that you oh, got the this, measurements and yeah, substitutions. so we've got portion size up here um, measurements and substitutions if you find yourself out of something you can look here this is what's available in kentucky um what time of year oh i like that yeah and then the other thing that i like about this is the recipe is up top and then at the bottom it tells you what you can add to make it into a meal so that it takes all the thought out of it right um, so just go buy these things um, and then it gives you a little bit of info about one of the ingredients it gives you something that you can do for physical activity and then um, there's a box in each day that you can check if you actually got that physical activity done so and then the back um, like I said, has the recipe cards, which is a neat thing. Yeah. Um, and Ooh. then there's. Oh, Ooh. what was he? Hold on here. Look at. Whoa, did I see just see like some kind of cheddar? Oh, broccoli cheddar yeah. biscuits. Yeah. Oh, be still my heart. Well, and look at all this pasta here. I mean. Oh yeah. There's so I mean, it has good, good rest. We've done this calendar for several years. Um, burrito bowls are huge right now. Um, lettuce wraps are big, so there's mm -hmm. a recipe for that. Um, all right, and this is available free for free so good Stop stuff by the extension office um we there's one in every county so even if you're not in hardin county um your county extension office will have these as well all right so, so. you're going to autograph it if they come by and do that you don't want my autograph <laughs> you, <don't> want <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to read it anyway <laughs> good stuff all right yep. so uh this is a great recipe yes. very easy recipe kid approved we had kids coming back for thirds Really? How often does that happen? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that doesn't Especially happen very Especially the group often. that I have, they're a little picky, and they all loved it. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, good stuff. So, again, this is the citrus. Chicken. Chicken stir fry. You got it. All right, I had to think about that. 111 Opportunity Way. I didn't mm -hmm. remember that. I don't know why that's stuck in my head it's a catchy, for a long time now. It's a catchy address, right? Yeah. yeah. Hardin County Extension Office. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many things that this extension office offers for our community, and this new facility is, is fabulous. This kitchen is fabulous. I love the idea that we collaborated with to come up with this mm -hmm. uh, this cooking show, Cooking in the Heartland. And uh, we're going to have other people on. And mm -hmm. if you'd like to be a part of maybe you've got a recipe that you've been dying to share with somebody, uh, you can email me. Email, email us at the bottom of the screen right now. And uh, we would love to have you come in. So uh, cool stuff. Again, come by the extension office and pick this up. Mm -hmm. uh, Dana, appreciate it. No problem. All right. She's Dana Fentress. And you got to say it that way or she'll hunt you down. <laughs> All right, with the Hardin County Extension Office, I'm Greg Milby, Community Storyteller, and this is Cooking in the Heartland with Kentucky's Heartland. See you next month.